Welcome to my video on Bermuda. The only way to get to Bermuda is by boat or plane. So if you want to go for more than a day or two, I recommend flying. They have taxis in Bermuda, but they are quite expensive. And the adventurous among you can rent a scooter for a reasonable price. If you prefer four wheels over two, you can also rent a small electric car called a Twizy, but they're around $120 per day. Bermuda isn't huge, so I did walk a lot of it, but I wouldn't fancy walking the whole thing. Absolute leg work here in Bermuda. <laughs> How are you doing? You alright? <laughs> Thanks! I opted for buses for most of my journeys. They're $5 each way or you can get a book of tickets from the bus station in Hamilton for a lot cheaper. The bus journeys are great. There isn't a lot of traffic in Bermuda so it takes no time at all and you get to soak in some nice views along the way. St George's is a nice town to visit, but I wouldn't recommend staying there due to its proximity to the rest of the island's attractions. The dockyard is of course where the cruise ships dock and as such it can be very quiet when there are no boats, so I wouldn't recommend there either to be honest. Hamilton's the capital, so there'll be a lot of activities around this area and some people might like to stay in, in the middle of the hustle and bustle. The northern side of Bermuda doesn't really have many beaches, so my tip would be to stay on the south side, either in Southampton, Warwick or Paget. Anywhere along here and you'll be within walking distance of a world class beach. I stayed in Warwick uh, myself at a guest house called Blue Horizon, which was a very short walk to Surfside Beach which was empty every time I visited. Some folks think Bermuda is a Caribbean island, well it's not. It's located between the USA and the UK in the middle of the Atlantic and is much further away from the equator than the Caribbean islands. This means it does have the four seasons, which means it's cold for half the year. April to September is usually the best weather-wise, but I would always aim to try and visit during a festival as that's when Bermuda really comes to life. And the one I opted for, which is Bermuda Day in May, their national holiday where lots of locals run a marathon in the morning and then there's a parade through Hamilton in the afternoon while everyone gets hammered on rum. They have a fashion festival in July for those that like that sort of thing. Um, they have a cup match in August which involves shutting the whole island down for a game of cricket and then a week of boozing. Hamilton's obviously worth visiting as the biggest town and capital of the island, uh, therefore has the most going on. Sessions House. St George's is the other town in Bermuda and is worth a quick visit. I did this on my way to the airport using my bus tickets. Crystal Caves is a popular day trip for tourists and it has a cool backstory involving two young boys a hundred years ago that lost their ball and happened upon the cave. Welcome to the Crystal Cave. Why are you liking the cave so far? Nice. Oh, thank you. Like I said, it's out of the Soda Straw. From Soda Straw to Stalactites. Stalactites into Stalactmites. Like these. Whoa! Personally, I wouldn't rush back. Nearby to Crystal Cave though, there's a place called Blue Hole. It was completely empty when I went in the summer. Um, there's a small beach to relax on and look out over the bay, as well as the Blue Hole itself, which is full of interesting fish and 100% clear water. The botanical gardens look nice in the summer for those that like plant life. And 
There's a nice little cafe in the middle called the Salty Lime as well. All of the beaches along the south side are worth visiting. The most popular is Horseshoe Bay with some incredible views and the sand here does have a pink shade to it. Of course, because it's the most popular, it gets very busy in the summer. So if you don't like crowds, just pick any of the other beaches along the south coast and you'll be fine. My favourite restaurant in Bermuda is Marcus's, which is in Hamilton. I had an impossible burger here and it was absolutely incredible. Harry's is another spot worth visiting in Hamilton and it isn't too far from Marcus's. I didn't eat here, but I had some of their special cocktails with their very own rum and they were really good. For the sports fans, Flanagan's Irish Pub is the one to go to. That's on Front Street in Hamilton, which is where most of the action happens. I also had a nice meal at a place called Divots, which wasn't very expensive and has a nice view over the sea, but it might not be easy to get to if you're not staying in the area. There's a place called The Swizzle, which has two locations and is famous for their rum mixed drink, which is aptly named The Swizzle. You'll only need one picture of this to get merry. The traditional drink though in Bermuda is called a Dark and Stormy, which is black rum and ginger beer. Very tasty and you've got to try it. Overall, I'd say Bermuda is definitely worth visiting. I'm not a massive beach fan, but these beaches were among the best in the world. The people are lovely, very outgoing and hospitable. It's ex it is expensive due to its location, but worth every penny for me. If you found this video helpful, please do hit the subscribe button as More Passport Stamps is all about encouraging everybody to travel and in helping everybody to maximise their time whilst travelling. Thank you so much for watching and becoming a subscriber.